Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us this morning is the gospel reading from John chapter 6, where Jesus teaches extensively on his identity as the bread of life. And over the next two weeks, we will see all that Jesus promises throughout this chapter. And today, his promise is this, the bread of life satisfies. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is quite a promise that Jesus makes. I mean, Jesus speaks of ending one of the most universal experiences of all life on earth. Hunger and thirst. I mean, these these sensations are part of our daily reality, and every day they remind us of a painful truth we can't ever seem to fully digest. Satisfaction never lasts. No matter how many times you go back to the buffet, if those are ever a thing again, no matter how many times you refill your cup, no matter how many times you upgrade your phone or your car or your house, satisfaction never lasts. You know, there's a reason that Keith Richards' I Can't Get No Satisfaction has been named the second greatest song of all time or why over 37 million people have listened to a song from the musical Hamilton with the title Satisfied, where Angelica Schuyler gives her toast to the bride and groom, wishing them satisfaction in their marriage, and yet knowing it will never come for them or for her. See, these are songs that recognize the basic human truth that we are always hungering, always thirsting, always searching for more. We see this happening with a crowd of people pursuing Jesus in our gospel this morning. Even after Jesus has fed them in the miraculous feeding of the 5,000, they were still hungry. Their stomachs weren't empty, but they were hungry for whatever more Jesus could offer them. And their hunger took them all the way to Capernaum as they hunted madly for Jesus. And when they found him, Jesus knew exactly why they were standing in front of him. They had witnessed his miracles, his healing the sick, his multiplying the loaves of bread and the fish, They saw what Jesus could do, and they wanted more. They were hungry for health, hungry for justice, hungry for good leadership, hungry for liberation. The list goes on and on, and Jesus could see right through it. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. The crowd wasn't seeking Jesus for who he was, who his miracles had signaled him to be. The crowd was seeking Jesus for what he could do for them, or at least what they imagined he could do for them. They didn't want Jesus. They wanted to be full. They were expending all of their resources on perishable things, things that would not last, things that would not truly satisfy. And Jesus calls them out on it. And he does the same to us. I mean, you and I are constantly searching. We're searching for a happier home life, We're searching for a medical treatment that will actually work. We're searching for more 
recognition, more vacation, more income, more security, more validation, more something. And the search never ends because no matter how satisfied we are for a moment, that moment always passes. We search after perishable things and the search never ends. And they aren't always bad things, but they are perishable. What were you seeking when you came to Emmanuel this morning? Did you come seeking community? Are you seeking inspiration, encouragement, familiarity? Did you come because you're trying to be a good parent, teaching the, your kids the importance of prioritizing church? Did you come looking for healing, chance at a new life? Did you come with hopes that things will finally start changing in your marriage or your family? I mean, these are great things to be looking for, and this happens to be a great place to find them and to be looking for them, but even as good as these things are, they are perishable. They will satisfy you for a moment, but that moment will pass. The satisfaction that these things bring will not last. Even more, our pursuit of these things can distract us from, or even prevent us from seeing the one who has come to give himself to us. How easily do we fall into seeking the gifts that Jesus gives rather than seeking Jesus himself? How easily do we fall into seeing Jesus as the one who has come to satisfy our needs as we see them rather than one who offers us so much more than we could ever ask for, than we could ever imagine? I mean, this is what sinners do. We blindly chase after the things we think we need, and when we find them, we are too blind to see that we are offered so much more. This is what C.S. Lewis was getting at in that beautiful quote from The Weight of Glory. He says, It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Here again, the wonderful promise that Jesus gives. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus has come this morning to give himself to you. Through his word, through his sacrament, Jesus is here to feed you with food that cannot run out, food that cannot spoil, food that cannot be taken away from you. Knowing all of your needs, far greater than you ever could, Jesus has come to feed you this morning with more, for more than just the week ahead, but for a life that will never end. He has come from the Father, having emptied himself through death on a cross in order that you will never go empty. And it's on that cross that Jesus makes and shows us the greatest satisfaction of all, satisfaction that truly lasts, where he shows us how far the, the Father is willing to go to satisfy his hunger, his hunger holy hunger, his hunger for your holiness, his hunger for your perfection, his hunger for your righteousness, his hunger to cleanse you from your sin and all that leads you to settle for so much less. He offers more. 
He offers himself to you to fill a hunger far greater than you could ever know. And it's on that cross where we see the wrath of God against sin satisfied, complete, finished. And it is from the cross that Jesus offers you satisfaction, where he does the impossible, where he puts an end to your endless pursuits. He is the bread of God who comes down from heaven to give life to the world. The bread of God who gives life to you. It's from the cross that he offers you pardon and peace. From the cross that he offers you hope and healing. Where he offers you full and lasting forgiveness for all of your sins. It's from the cross where he offers you justice True and lasting justice, justice that heals all things, repairs all things, rights all things, justice that satisfies every cry, every tear, every hurt. It's from the cross that he offers you identity, where he covers over all of your blemishes, over all of your mistakes, your sins, your endless search for who you are. He covers over all of it with this beautiful truth that you have a value far greater than anything on this earth could give you. You have been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. You are redeemed. You are chosen. That is who you are. Your life matters not because others in this world insist that it does, but because Jesus shows you that it does. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The bread of life satisfies. It is the bread that has conquered death. It is bread that has come down from heaven and gives you life. It is bread that nourishes you in all of the times when the brokenness of this world takes from you, when you are left wondering how you can ever make it through. Jesus feeds you. Jesus satisfies you. And something incredible happens when the bread of life satisfies He doesn't just take your hunger and your thirst. He changes it. He transforms it. He shapes it to be like his. He's the bread that has come to give life to the world. A place that becomes so much bigger and more beautiful when we aren't held captive by our own pursuits of the perishable as he opens your eyes and the eyes of those around you to see a life that cannot be taken away, to see something far greater than a holiday at the sea, to see a hope, a home, a place in his kingdom, infinite joy that will never end. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.